We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. What do you think? Should marijuana be legalized in Tennessee, medically or recreationally? And what do you think about the laws? It is decriminalized to a sort here in Nashville because of what the district attorney's done. We're six months in and kind of taking an evaluation of that. Kevin Teets is an attorney joining us, uh, and he represents individuals uh, who have been charged with marijuana drug crimes. Good morning to you, Kevin, and thanks for joining us. Hey, before we, we get to the phone calls, would you give me your definition, the difference between legalized marijuana and decriminalizing it what's the difference in your mind well I think legalizing it you know there's there's it's there's gonna be no consequences whatsoever um, decriminalizing it is essentially when there's someone could face some infractions but those infractions are not criminal in nature ie they would not face jail time they would not face uh, yeah, incarceration would not be something that would be up for uh, consideration when it comes to punishment. It would be something potentially more like a civil infraction where they would have a fine or, or, or something of, of the like. Um, but, you know, you've seen, you've seen states across the country that have completely uh, made marijuana uh, for simple possession, made that legal. I'm certainly an advocate for legalization, um, legalization for recreational use. Um, but but I think that you know that's something that the, the legislature has yet to is yet to tackle and is yet to address. Um, we we saw a bill this this year in the Senate that started to, to merge out of committee. Um, it actually made it out of out of the, the state committee. Um, but then because of the, the pandemic, you know the sessions uh, didn't continue. And and the sponsor of that bill actually uh, was Nashville's own Steve Dickerson, I believe, um, who was just defeated in his reelection. So it'll be interesting to see what comes next in the legislature. But. You know, you're seeing, you're Nick, Nick, you're also seeing states that are uh, legalizing marijuana now as a, as a revenue source, uh, given the pandemic. That's been one of the things that, that, that the different states have started addressing. So I'm hopeful that Tennessee will be a state that uh, does legalize um, marijuana so that people can, can uh, for those who need it medically, can have it. And for those that do recreationally use it, that they're no longer facing um, unneeded prosecution and penalties. Let's take a few phone calls, if, if that's okay with you, Kevin. We'll start off with Larry. Absolutely. Larry, good morning. Hi, Larry. Hey, good morning, Nick. Good Thanks morning. Thank you my call. Sure. Yeah, I'd just like to tell you uh, my experience with marijuana. Uh, I've had a back injury several years ago. The doctor uh, prescribed some oxycodone for me. And I soon found out that is a terrible drug. I, Nick, I was an addict. I was mm -hmm. an addict for about six years. And I discovered marijuana. I smoked back in the 70s, years ago. But back then, you know, uh, you could uh, work without taking a drug test. Then they started giving you drug tests. Yeah. Well, I had to quit smoking. Well, I could work. Okay, smoking marijuana, it got me off oxycodone. Yeah, uh, that's a powerful statement right there, my friend. And uh, I've heard anecdotal evidence along those lines. And anyone out there, and I know there's some people, by the way, let's, I just, let me say this up front. Uh, there are some folks out there with excruciating pain, and some of these opioids, when done responsibly under a doctor's supervision, are perfectly fine. But anyone out there who thinks that marijuana is a worse drug than an opioid is a fool, period. And yet one's legal and one isn't. Absolutely. Period. I mean, there's just no, there's no comparison between the two in terms of which is more addicting, which is more potentially dangerous. And this gentleman here was able to wean himself off opioids for the pain that he suffers using marijuana. I mean, I know that's one of the strong arguments I think probably you and others make for legalizing medical marijuana anyway. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. And and let's add on to the statement that you said. There's there's one drug that has wrecked the, the many families' lives across the state and across the country, um, and that is absolutely opioids. That has to, is simply destroyed families in rural areas. Um, and marijuana has not done that. Um, there's there's little little evidence that marijuana is is a drug that that leads to a gateway drug that is leads to other addictions. Um, it's, it's, there's little evidence to show that marijuana itself is addicting. Um, where opioids, you know, no doubt they're, they're extremely addictive. Um, and, and it's a situation that a lot of times for people that find themselves, you know, in an addiction with opioids, it's something that started oftentimes by, by a simple injury, a car accident, or maybe it's a sports injury or, or what have you, that, that can lead down to a road with people later uh, turning to, when they're not, not able to get the, the prescribed substance of opioids, that they, they turn to other means to, to, get, to get that fixed, to get the, the drug use that, they, that they're addicted to, to those opioids. Um, it can lead to heroin addiction, it can lead to other things, and, and can, can lead to death, um, as we well know. So sure. certainly, yeah, I agree, I agree with you 100%. Anyone comparing the two has zero idea what they're talking about. Um, 
it's there's just there's just no comparison to the addictive uh, addictive nature of opioids compared to marijuana. There's That's no exactly right. And doctors will tell you as much. Not to say again that in certain instances, of course, opioids can be a, a great help to people, but there there is a big difference between these two drugs. Let, let's go next to uh, Herbert. Herbert, good morning. Hi, Herbert. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's on your mind, buddy? Uh, I wanted to call you this morning, and I wanted to talk to y'all about something that Tennessee do. Uh, look, uh, marijuana is not going to stop your pain. I'm a, I'm a war veteran. Mm -hmm. Opioid, okay, they gave me Oxycontin, and it made me sick. Mm. But we sell on something called Tomadol, a, a, a light, yeah. uh, a, tom a light, Opioid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that worked just fine. Good. But when the man made the law saying you can't smoke marijuana and get your opioid at the same time, well, <laughs> I got meth. And, and I'm stuck in the middle. Now, here's what happened with pain. When your body is in pain, you get your, <clears throat> your white blood cell start to kill off your red blood cell. That's where I'm at right now. Well, listen, and, and like I said, I was trying to make the point, and I'm glad he called in at least to make that point, that uh, some opioids, and he's on one that seems to be helping him. I wasn't clear on whether or not he felt the same way about marijuana or not. Um, what's interesting, though, because in the state of Tennessee right now, um, Kevin, if you ask a doctor about marijuana, they really don't give you much of an answer, at least not professionally, unless you have a friend and you talk to them, you know, over a, a cocktail somewhere and they're sharing their thoughts with you. Because the truth is, because it's illegal, doctors are very hesitant to say much about it and certainly are not going to prescribe it to a patient here in Tennessee knowing it's illegal, even though I believe some of them have very strong opinions on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would agree that there's many that absolutely have strong opinion opinions on it. And the one area that doctors absolutely have a strong opinion on is is the the addictive qualities of of opioids. Um, and you see, I believe that you see more and more doctors now that are reluctant to prescribe some of the stronger opioids that can lead to addictions and are looking for other other forms of uh, pain management um, as as a as a as a cause or, or as a uh, replacement for opioid uh, prescriptions and again unless you know the situation absolutely warrants uh, an opioid use as, as you mentioned i mean uh used correctly they, as you say they they do have a, a value and i believe the, doc the doctors would would uh, would agree with that but um but yeah I, I have not heard any situations where doctors uh, in tennessee are, are recommending marijuana as a as a, as a uh, medical solution just because you know, it would, it would probably put their license in jeopardy exactly. for them to do so when it's yep. when it's not legal in the state. Yeah, what I have heard, Gavin, is that some doctors here find the way around. They basically say, listen, you need to go to another state where it's legal and ask a doctor there, and maybe they'll be able to help you. And right. it's unfortunate that, and that's right. what I've said all along for medical marijuana, some of these children with seizures, things like that, that the families have had to move from Tennessee to another state just to get the help they need to do so legally. Let's, let's go to uh, Tom, Tom next is on the horn. Tom, good morning. Hi, Tom. Hi, good morning, Nick. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. What's on your mind? I, well, you know, man, you discussed this many times about legalization of marijuana. Yeah. I've been, I've been smoking pot for 53 years, and I can quit when I want to, or I can smoke when I want to, but I use it for pain medication because I fell 80-something feet, mm. and I've been on opiates for over 30 years, and with the ma marijuana has taken me down I don't have to do as much opiates as I used to. That's great. Hey, remind and, me, remind me, I know we've talked before, Tom, remind me how, since you live in Tennessee, without getting too specific, how do you go about getting your marijuana? Well, I have to grow it, or I have to go out here illegally and try to find it, hmm. or I have to go across the state line and buy uh, up there. Do you, worry about, probably, do you worry about maybe somehow one time being caught and being charged? No, sir. I have been caught. I got caught with three joints of marijuana. I went and spent three years in the penitentiary. But I got the uh, Department of Correctional Hand Manual out and seen that the Department of Correction has to take care of you because they have to take care of you medical and everything else. So since they busted me for about three or four dollars worth of pot, I spent about sixty or seventy me or six. I'm excuse me, sir, sixty thousand dollars worth of medical that I needed. 
because of this. So I spent sixty thousand dollars of their money for three dollars worth of pot. And really, was it was that all it was? Was it the marijuana that was it like a third strike or something? That seems like a lot of time for uh, just a few joints. No, I was just in a, in a bad state. That's mm. down on it, and like I said, it's. It's just really hard. You know, what, what he describes there is the thing that, you know, on a, the financial front, Kevin, is part of it. And I'm wondering, I know the sheriff here has said just in the last month, he's seen a reduction in the number of, uh, you know, folks having to go to the jail for these marijuana charges. Think about that. A handful of joints, and this guy's being sent to the pen sometime in the past. I mean, is that overkill or what? Well, it's absolutely overkill, and and I I think your instincts are correct that that uh, that does seem a little hard for just what he described. I mean, I don't yeah. know all the facts of, right. of, his, of his situation, sure. and, and certainly and certainly would be reluctant to have him discuss discuss those in more detail on uh, on, on live on live TV. But uh, you know, but but you do bring up something though that is certainly uh, relevant that could have been at play. Um, you know, we did have a, a three strikes law in Tennessee that uh, the third time of, for possession of marijuana. Um, did become a class C felony. And, and fortunately, you know, if there's one area of progress that the legislature has done um, is that they overturned that, that portion of the, the TCA, that portion of the code, um, that that's no longer the case now in Tennessee, that somebody that you, know, you can get a third and subsequent um, simple possession charge and it, and it doesn't elevate to a felony anymore in Tennessee. But, you know, some of the things that he, that he described, I mean, uh, the growing of marijuana, for example, you know, that can be a felony, absolutely can be a felony charge. The cultivation of it can be a felony charge. And it can be something that, you know, under federal law is still illegal as well, um, which is, you know, an area that needs to be addressed uh, too, because you, you still have under the federal um, federal law that uh, marijuana use and possession is, is still illegal. So, I mean, even, even with these states that have enacted uh, laws that, that uh, no longer outlaw or, or make marijuana legal, um, it's still against the federal law. So, I mean, you know, to make everything above board 100%, I mean, it would be best if Congress were to uh, were to act um, along with our state legislature. <laughs> yeah, and you're right. That's a good point. We can talk about this when we come back from the break. We'll take Joe and some other calls. But uh, some in the state will say, look, it remains illegal here because we take our guidance from the federal level. And if marijuana is still considered illegal federally, even though the feds aren't prosecuting in the states where it's been legalized, Tennessee chooses to abide by that. And that's what you'll hear sometimes from law enforcement here. We'll take a break. Be back with more with Kevin Teets and uh, invite more phone calls, 737-7587. And if you happen to be someone out there who is opposed to legalizing marijuana or to decriminalizing it like Nashville is, I'd love to hear from you and, and your line of thinking. I, I'd, I'd like to see if there's something maybe I haven't thought of. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this. This is a Storm 5 weather update. For weather on the go, download the Storm Shield app. I'm News Channel 5 meteorologist Nikki D.